New shock in Gary Lineker versus the BBC. And I might have just you turned on what I thought about this saga. I don't know if you've seen what's been happening in Gary Lineker being stood down, maybe fired from the BBC. And at first it really triggered my freedom of speech hot button. And I believe you should be able to express your opinion. And immediately I thought, well, Gary Lineker should be able to express his opinion. He should not be cancelled for a tweet. This is outrageous. And I posted such on Twitter. Now, let me know what you think if Gary Lineker should or shouldn't have been fired for sharing his opinion by the BBC. But there's a new shock in this. I think you're going to be shocked by what I'm about to say. Let me just get you up to speed with what's happened. So um, Gary Lineker tweeted about UK's new immigration policy. He called it <clears throat> beyond awful. And he said that there was language used that was similar to that of Germany in the 1930s. Then he was asked if he regretted the tweet and he said no. He stood by the tweet. There's no regrets. He says he wants to speak up for other people that don't have a voice. Then he was pulled in by the BBC. He was told that he broke their editorial guidelines. He responded by saying that he believes he should have freedom or be free to express his personal opinions. And then he was pulled off air, suspended. And now Alan Sugar, Alan Sugar, he's not on Match of the Day. Alan Shearer has pulled out of Match of the Day. Ian Wright has pulled out of Match of the Day. And everyone's boycotting Match of the Day. And BBC have found them in this really tight corner. Uh, and in fact, some people are saying they've kind of shot themselves in the foot. Let me know what you think. But let's look at it from the other side. Gary Lineker is employed by the BBC. The BBC is state funded. Therefore, the taxpayers fund the BBC and the BBC pay Gary Lineker. Gary Lineker has signed a contract with the BBC. The BBC um, are supposed to be independent and impartial. So therefore, their editorial gu guidelines would state in the contract that they are independent and impartial. And so more extreme views might break that independent impartiality and therefore in breach of contract. Now, can someone who's, let's say you employed someone and they went, my boss is a twat, I hate my boss. Would you like that? Would that be against their contract? Now, Darren has said the BBC aren't impartial. That's another discussion altogether. They claim they're impartial. So I've actually thought about this a lot and I, it's, a, it's a really interesting paradox, which is why I wanted to do a video on it. And I do recommend you share this, by the way, because at first I thought this is such like it's just drama. It's, it's melodrama. Who cares? Gary Lineker, BBC, whatever. But actually, it's a really interesting paradox, because on the one hand, I believe you and I should fight for freedom of speech, even for people we don't agree with or like. Because as soon as we allow mainstream media or entities or political systems to control our speech, they then to start, start control our mind and we lose our freedom. So on the one hand, you must fight for freedom of speech. But then on the other hand, if you're employed by someone, someone has said here he's not employed by the BBC. Of course he's employed by the BBC. Of course he is. So if you're employed by someone and you have a contract with them, you should read that contract and you take that one and a half million a year or whatever he, he earns and you are employed by them. And as such, you have contractual obligations and guidelines and bringing a brand into disrepute would be against that contract. And I'm an employer. I employ nearly 150 people. So I'm completely torn on this one. Freedom of speech, fiduciary contractual responsibility, freedom of speech. <laughs> So I don't know. Let me know what you think anyway. But I wanted to discuss it more thoroughly rather than just say, oh, you know, fight for freedom of speech. I stand by Gary. I saw John Caldwell, the billionaire. He believed that BBC were right to suspend Gary Lineker. Hmm. 
No, Catherine, Gary Lineker didn't say he hated his boss. Okay, let me use another example. Let's say that an employer made a really, sorry, let's say an employee made a really extreme view on social media that could bring the employer loss of business, bad reputation. What then? So I actually don't know the right answer. And I love these 50-50 discussions and debates. So um, let me just summarise and you let me know what you think. At first, I stood by Gary Lineker because I think everyone should be able to express their opinion. Uh, And um, if we suppress people's opinions, we suppress freedom of speech. We then control thoughts and minds and then no one has any freedom. And that is a road we do not want to go down. And then I thought, well, from the employer's point of view, BBC, who employ Gary Lineker, who give him a lovely salary of 1.5 million a year, paid by the taxpayer. He signed a contract. In that contract, I'm sure it's got their editorial guidelines. I'm sure it's got their brand guidelines. He's got a responsibility to that brand not to bring them into any kind of disrepute. And he signed that and he takes the 1.5 million a year. So can he say whatever he wants or not? Well, he signed a contract which probably says he can't. And most people aren't seeing that side. And that's, I believe, the shock in the Gary Lineker versus BBC. Where will this go? How will it all blow up? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. And yeah, I wonder if you might share this because I think this is a really good discussion. I will will read all the comments and try and reply to them. But I might have just changed my mind a little bit. And I think um, it's okay to change your mind from time to time because I did tweet yesterday supporting Gary Lineker. And I might tweet today saying, hmm, maybe BBC have got a point. Craig has said, don't bite the hand that feeds you. Exactly. If you're getting paid a really handsome salary. I mean, I think he's been working for the BBC since what? The late 90s or something? He's taken a million, a million and a half for 20, 30 years. What? Cushy job sits there chatting about football. Maybe he should shut his mouth. Maybe he should stay in his lane. Maybe he should talk about football and football only. A bit like the people in the World Cup in Qatar. The footballers should have just played football. And they started talking about LGBTQ, rainbow, wearing rainbow armbands and watches and refusing to say and do this and that. You're a footballer. Play football. That's your job. Let me know what you think in the comments. Daniel said Matt Letizia was sacked under the same st- circumstances. Um, yeah, I, I interviewed Matt Letizia on my podcast. We talked about that a lot if you want to go to uh, and listen to that. My podcast is called Disruptors. It's on YouTube and um, any any platform, audio, it's been going seven years, we're nearly 900 episodes in. I interviewed Paul Merson, I interviewed Matt Letizia when he got sacked. Yeah, really interesting. I, I interviewed a lot of people who've been cancelled, Katie Hopkins, because actually I think we should all be able to express our opinion to the point where it's defamation or it's abuse or hate or trolling. Defamation, abuse, hate and trolling should be dealt with. And I actually think they should be dealt with stronger than they are. I think people should feel the full force of consequences for defamation, hate, trolling and abuse. But anything to that line is opinion. And we should all be allowed to express our opinion. Let me know your opinion. Thanks for tuning in. And I wonder if you wouldn't mind hitting the share button. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.